This is part four of the Final Fantasy Tactics Advance Let's Play. And here I think I'll just be uh, doing a little work with my party here. Uh, the way your party comes equipped is pretty much the bare minimum. Here you'll see all the jobs humans can be. We've got soldier, archer, white mage, black mage, and thief. Now uh, I'll be I'll be keeping March as a soldier because later on he'll be able to become some pretty pretty BA uh, physical type jobs. And here for the Mughals they can be uh, black mages as Mont Blanc already is, or animists or thieves. Now even though thieves are both human and Mughal jobs, they are the same. And then here you're given another human. Who can be all the same jobs as Marsh, but he'll he'll be a thief because I want to have him as a dedicated ninja later. And then Bonga are limited to only white monk and warrior, and warrior is very very similar to uh, soldier as humans have. But I'll keep him as a white monk because they have a pretty good skill set. Now this this is a, a new Mao who can be white mages and black mages, as we've already seen. And then beast masters, which are typically pretty useless. I've never quite used them. I won't be using this unit for very long, I don't typically run with a new Mao. I'll probably pick up another Viera along the way if I can. Which, by the way, Viera can be fencers, which are kinda unique physical fighters, white mages as we've already seen, and archers, and I'm gonna have this one run as a white mage to try to get to uh, red mage as quickly as possible, start learning that dual cast. Now, uh, I was trying to decide here whether I wanted my new Mao for the short time that I have him to run as white mage or black mage, and I decided to have him run as black mage because I wanted a little more damage, especially since I'm going to have my Viera running as a white mage and there's really no purpose for two mages. Now here I'm showing, just demonstrating that if you do change Marsh's job, his sprite, because he's unique, does not change to fit the job. But anyway, now that we've got everybody all equipped, here's the screen um, for abilities. As you see, every character gets two action abilities, one reaction ability, one support ability, and one combo ability. Um, I'm going through and equipping Marsh with item because he does not come pre-equipped with item, and if you don't have item equipped, you can't use items, and that's kind of bad in the beginning because you will be needing items since you can't really use a lot of healing or reviving spells. And here I'm just going through and showing that you know not nobody else really has any other abilities learned yet because, well. They haven't learned anything. We just got them. So, uh, what we're going to go do now, after this, is I'm going to uh, run to the shop in town to equip them. But I think first I'm going to throw on some uh, equipment to those whose jobs I've changed, because when you would change a job, as it already notified earlier, um, it unequips all items because there are certain jobs that can't equip certain items. So you have to reassign equipment. Now here, by pressing the R button here, I've pulled up what abilities can be learned from this weapon. That's how that's how abilities are learned in this game is through equipment and weapons. Typically, uh, typically, the the weapon will teach a offensive ability, whereas armor, helmets, and shields will teach support or reaction abilities. And then, as for the combo abilities, those are taught by specific weapons in the game called uh, mithril weapons. And there's one combo for each job in the game. But anyway, we're going through and equipping these guys, and the way it works, the way this whole job system works is, it's, uh, for instance, I want this uh, character, uh, Leaf, to be, <laughs> Leaf the Thief, <laughs> that's funny. Anyway, I want Leaf to be a thief for a little while, because I want him to learn, I want to say it's two, but it might be three, um, action abilities, three skills he can use as a thief, which in his case will be steal, stealing different things, gill, or or accessories, or sh shields, or what have you. And he'll be stealing, and once he learns a certain amount of stealing techniques, he will be able to have access to a better job known as Ninja, and that works for a lot of different jobs. But anyway, now, this is this is the shop here. I'm, I'm coming in and I'm buying some equipment, and I kind of know what I want already because of the way my that my jobs are configured. I know I've only got one really heavy hitter that wears heavy armor, which is Marsh, so it's going to be Bronze Helm for him. And here I bought a Green Beret, thinking that I had an Archer to learn the ability that it uh, that it teaches, and that I, I will notice later that I most certainly do not, and that kind of messed me up. But yeah, here I go ahead and I think I buy Bronze Armor for Marsh. Or maybe I don't. Nope, looks like I don't. 
And here, like, you should see the chain plate de uh, would learn, a, or would learn, would teach a red mage or a juggler uh, the ability catch, which is a nice one. And here's some swords that I could equip later, but I didn't buy any of those for now because I'm slightly worried about my, um, oh, maybe I did. Just kidding, I did buy them now. I'm slightly worried about my money here, so I, I think I stopped buying stuff after this knife for the thief so he can start learning his action ability, which I want him to get out of the way as quickly as possible. Because I want to get that ninja as quickly as possible, because they have an ability called Double Sword, which causes, or, doubles? Dual Wield, which causes them to obviously wield two weapons at once. And this is cool, like, just as it is, but when you dual wield weapons, it allows you to attack twice at full power, so it essentially doubles their attack strength. It's like having two warriors in one, so... I'm going to have that ninja get on that immediately, and then later on in the game, I'm going to have Marsh do the same thing. He'll take a kind of a side trip into that job tree just to learn uh, dual wield because hitting twice is ungodly powerful. But here I go uh, equipping just the other stuff that I bought here, and here here's where I equip that green beret that I thought for some reason I thought the green beret would teach the thief catch, and I got him confused with an archer. And you'll see there that uh, Bonga can't equip headgear as white monks, which is kind of a little bit of a disadvantage for him. And we got uh, we got my Viera here, the white mage. Now here's where uh, here's where I was went to set up that support ability, and I was kind of confused that it, it wasn't there. And then I realized that uh, it's archers and animists, and I felt quite stupid. But I'd already bought it, so I think I decided to leave it there. Yep. So now that my whole outfit is, uh, we're all set up, we, uh, we head on into... Oh! Okay. I'm checking the laws for the day. By pressing L, as you see on the screen, or you can, you can check the laws for the day, as I talked about in a previous video. This is the Monster Bank. Honestly, I've never used this place, and I don't plan on using it ever. <laughs> I'm sorry if you want to see gameplay of this area, but you're going to have to be disappointed because I hate the Monster Bank and I don't understand it. Anyway, this is the pub which I think I hit the wrong button. Yep. The pub where you can check out rumors and missions and um, rumors typically are just they're typically uh, just side information that you can read if you care to but sometimes by reading certain rumors you'll unlock missions that you can accept. And uh, I think I just paged through a few of the rumors here just to show a couple examples. I think originally when I was recording this I, I had the idea that I was going to read these but I feel far too lazy right now to read those so I figure that you can read. And as you might have seen just there by um by reading certain rumors you will actually unlock more rumors and again sometimes through these rumors is the only way you can get certain missions so I always make a point to to read all of them or at least you know check all of them you don't necessarily have to read them and it'll always alert you when there's new new rumors so that's always good anyway here we go I checked the missions and there's only one mission and this is why I was worried about money is because it costs 300 gil to buy this mission or buy the information for this mission and so I've done this before if you spend all your money on items and equipment before you start this mission you end up having no money to take the mission and you have to sell all the stuff you just bought just so you can take this mission and start your way on you know, to go actually start your quest. Later on there'll be a, a system of like random encounters, I guess you would call them, to you know, in case you need to make some like emergency money. But as of right now there's no other way to battle, no other way to make money, so if you sell all your or if you buy all your stuff you have to sell it all back just so you can take this mission. But here I've uh I'm paying for the information and they give us a little cutscene, I believe, of uh, Monte Blanc checking in the scene uh, if he got a good mission. Anyway, uh, looks like Clan Tantalus is going to be going on their first mission. I'll be damned if it was Clam Nutsy. Clan Nutsy. Clan Nutsy. Clan Nutsy. Anyway. Oh, I believe I. Yes, I. I take a little side trip over to Sprom because I wanted to show you guys the prison. Hopefully, if I'm paying attention in this Let's Play, I'll never have to come back here. <laughs> but, um, 
Here you can release people. Like if you have a if you have a unit that has gotten a red card and is currently imprisoned, you can pay to have them released. Or pardon is if somebody has a yellow card, which means they have a penalty on them. That's that's where you can get rid of those. And far 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 on into the game, if you 100% all of the quests and missions, you get a special character in your party which can actually pardon. Uh, pardon as an ability in the battle. It's pretty cool. I was watching a video about it today. But anyway, we head over to Giza Plains, and I checked here that the laws forbid swords and recommend staves, and since swords were forbidden, and I decided that I wanted to use swords, because Marge is going to be my main hitter here, I moved to one panel and moved back to past two days, and it therefore it passed the laws two days forward, because the law for the day change, it changes every day. So if you check on a mission and you see that the laws aren't what you want them to be, you can waste a couple days and come back and hope the laws are better. That's what I did here, because there's no way I was going to be fighting without having to use swords. That was going to be a serious hindrance here. But it looks like um, I'm going to have to clear out these monsters here before we can finish off our mission. So here's where we send in... Yeah, here's the laws here. I changed the laws to... Uh, forbidden is confused and recommended is berserk. I don't even think I have any abilities that can catch those ailments yet, so it's really nothing to worry about right now. In the beginning of the game, the laws will be pretty loose, and they're not going to be a big weight on your mind, but later on in the game, they become quite a problem. You have to really base your strategy around what the laws are. But anyway, you're given, uh, as you see, a small area to kind of distribute your, unit, your units and uh, place them strategically, like, I obviously place my mages in the back because otherwise they're going to get hit up front and I'll lose them, and that's not good. But uh, here we have, uh, you know, the enemies moving. Sometimes these these enemy turns take a while, and in, in my future videos I might fast forward some of their turns. But here I, uh, I, I find that Bongar are always, almost always the fastest. And since this was the closest I could get to him, I just, uh, Jumped up, punched him in the face. Oh, maybe not. Oh, I was checking my techniques. Now, if you see, it says 20 damage, 40% on the blue box there. And you'll see that a lot. There's, you know, certain damage, certain percent. And that's uh, the predicted damage that you'll do, and then the percentage chance that you have to hit. See, there was a 40% chance, so I pretty obviously I was going to miss. And since, uh, that's most likely because I was attacking from the front there. And you'll see that's that's gonna be a spot you're gonna want to watch a lot is damage and percent because it's it's most of this game. <laughs> now here I'm casting fire, and you'll notice I didn't target the square that the enemy was standing on. I targeted the square behind it, but yet it still um, it still hits. Well, rather it misses, but it targeted it. And the reason for that is the the fire, blizzard, thunder, the black mage spells, they attack in a, a cross formation. So if you target a panel. It will hit that panel and all adjacent panels um, horizontally and vertically, not not diagonally. And so y you can use that to your advantage to target you know multiple enemies at once. But it can also be a hindrance because sometimes you'll end up having to hit your own ally in order to uh, in order to, to deal the damage you need to do to the enemy. Now here I uh, I I saw I wasn't going to do any substantial damage. So I figured I'd I'd steal a little money instead. Now here it's at 60 damage, 75 percent, but in this case damage is going to be gill stolen and it wasn't quite as much 47 because I mean it's never gonna be ideal but I managed to steal that gill and earn some experience for it too more often than not using abilities instead of attacking will earn you more experience now for now m for now Marsh only has um, first aid so that's not an ability I really need so he's just gonna you know, do a regular attack and generally as far as facing goes I just try to face toward as many enemies as I can at once. Unless, obviously, the enemy is way too far away to be of any consequence. Now here, again, I'm attacking from the front. Even though, like, I'm not directly in front of him, I'm still... the enemy is still facing me, so it was only a 40% chance to hit, but luckily it hit anyway. Um, and then the enemy will take their tuner again. Now, for this video, I, uh, I recorded the video in advance, and now I'm doing the commentary on it afterward. I'm not sure if I'll continue to do it this way or if I will be recording myself as I play and then editing later. I'm fine that might that might um, that might turn out a little better. I, uh, this video, 
I will, you know, record the video and then record the the sound as I'm doing now, and the next vi video that I do, I will be um recording them both at once. So we'll see how that goes. Now here you can see that I um, I initially intended to target all three of my party members with that cure, but as you can see, the uh, the enemy was also included in that cast. It was also a cross cast, so I had to not. In, in, I sacrificed targeting my Bonga, which didn't need to be cured anyway, it, to make sure that I didn't accidentally cure the enemy, which is which will happen. Now here, I can see that um, the enemy's only got 10 health. So I figured, you know, these mages could finish him off before he gets a turn. But I guess I decided to attack him anyway. Never mind. I thought I was going somewhere else with that. See, that's what I mean by, like, I think I'm going to be recording myself speaking while I play from now on, because... It's kind of hard for me to comment on things that I don't really remember doing. And the enemy's going to take their turn again. and uh... Smack my smack my thief here. <coughs> yeah, I'll definitely be... Um, I'll be fast-forwarding some of these videos because these enemy turns tend to drag on. Some of, the, some of the names they come up with for these enemies is kind of ridiculous. That guy's name is Skondot. It's like you literally just like smacked your keyboard and put that name in. Now here the judge gets a turn. Every now and again the judge will get a turn. As you can see they have an insane movement range. and It's, I think, actually bonus content in the game to ever even be able to fight a judge. Normally it's not even, you're not even able to do that because they're just so ungodly powerful. See here... With my fire, I was able to cast it in a uh, cross formation around my thief, but I was able to hit both those goblins, and it was quite potent, as you see. And uh, as for, for killing a unit, you know, that my Numao got a JP. Again, they're not... They don't do anything right now, because I don't have combo, and I don't have the Totemus Summon, as I mentioned earlier, but... They're still good to accumulate, because... For the Totemus Summon, you need ten of them, and... As much as it seems like it wouldn't be that hard to accumulate them, it's harder than, than you would think, because a lot of times if you do have combo, you're going to be wanting to use them up and not wait to accumulate them all. But anyway, uh, missions this early on in the game are pretty much just going to be clean up. You're just going to run around and do basic attack. They, they'll get more interesting as the units start to learn abilities or start to get better jobs even. Now, I, I wanted to demonstrate um, critical hits, but I don't believe I get any in this battle, so I'll, I'll have to save that for another. Now, as you see here, I, again, I use the the cross formation of this belt to, you know, to target only the enemy. If you'll notice, when um, when enemies are KO'd, they, they fall, but they don't, they don't disappear. And that can actually be used to your advantage or disadvantage. For instance, here, I believe, if you notice how the Red Goblin, immediately behind him, there is a, um, there's a, a corpse of another Goblin, which means that I can't occupy that space, which means I can't attack him from behind, and it's actually a very good strategy to use. Occasionally, um, judges on their turn will move corpses around to try to open up the battle area, but it doesn't happen very often, so you can use it to your advantage. Oh, silly goblin moved right into my range. Yep. Early on you'll learn that uh, Bonga are typically pretty hard hitters. Now here I am demonstrating how you can actually back press B out of your menu and you can see the stats of the enemies you have. It doesn't matter so much now, but later on when you um if you have a high level thief that can steal important like, you know, really rare items it's nice to be able to check the status of your enemy because you can actually see their items and see what you need to steal. But anyway, this uh, this battle is wrapping up pretty pretty soon here. Now here, I believe, yeah, I make a dumb move here. I decided not to waste any more MP for no real reason, other than to I just wanted to beat the goblin to death with a staff. I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? But here, here's the instance of what I'm talking about. The corpse is in the way, and the thief doesn't have enough movement range to get all the way around to the front, so he actually can't attack him. 
So he's forced to come over here, and I think he finishes this guy off. Yeah. 17 over 13. And oh, he misses. Never mind. But now, because of that, this red goblin actually had a turn to move, and uh, he hits my, my black mage, and I, he K's, KOs him. Now, KOs don't. Like, if your unit's KO'd in battle, unlike the original Final Fantasy Tactics, they will not disappear. They, um, they'll be just, they'll be fine after the battle. They'll just, you know, be KO'd for the rest of the battle, unless you revive them. There are special areas later on where this isn't the case, but for now, they just, they are knocked out unconscious, and they'll be fine the next battle. But here we are, um, the rest of the, all of the enemies have been defeated, and the mission is completed. Er, oh, sorry, I jumped ahead. Now they're all defeated, and now the mission is completed. And I still got to beat him to death with a mage, so I'm still happy. And usually after a, after a battle, Marshall stops to say something, or maybe Montablanc will. But and then you get your little mission, your uh, your victory theme again. And now uh, you'll be actually coming to get what you came for. You just had to clear the monsters out in the first place. What were we looking for? Muskma something? And then Monteblanc realizes that that grows everywhere and we probably didn't have to fight those monsters. Way to go. You, yep, good one. <laughs> when when you were little, I, Monteblanc, you're, you're still pretty little. I don't think, do you, do you know, did you notice? <laughs> but as they're mentioning here, uh, the mission fee for this, for this mission was uh, relatively cheap, and as you progress through the storyline, things will get more expensive and they'll be a heck of a lot more dangerous. But anyway, you finish the battle and you receive gil and AP. Typically, for a story mission, you're going to receive 40 AP, and you get to play. And in this case, you get to place a new map. Now, the AP will be applied to your weapons abilities that you. Anybody who participated participated in the ba battle, and through gathering enough AP, you can um, learn those abilities, master them, and have them usable at any time without having to have that weapon equipped. But um, this mess, this video is coming to close. So bye.